spotted with a hose wrapped around its head. How a valley community is working to free her so she can get back to her litter. All ahead tonight on the news at 9. All right, take a look at this wonderful snowfall up in Payson's today. We are not going to see snow like this tomorrow morning here in the valley. <laughs> I but hope you, not. But you may want to crank <laughs> up the heat tonight. You've been warned. It might be chilly. Yeah, that's why we're starting with Royal here on a Friday yeah. night. We're, we're in for it for a couple days. Very cool overnight. Yeah, and it's uh, tender ornamental time, mm -hmm. pets and everything like that. Because we're not going to be below freezing for much of the next several days, but we're going to be cold enough. Close yeah. enough yeah. to it. Absolutely. So let's check it out. We have 49 degrees at Sky Harbor right now. Relative humidity at 54%. Light wind out of the southwest, uh, southwest at three miles. Miles an hour, pardon me. And we are first alerting for next week because this freeze warning may extend into the entire valley by next week. But for tomorrow morning and for Sunday morning, it's in the extreme southeast valley, south of the Loop 202 boundary, basically. And that freeze warning goes as far south as Casa Grande. Uh, also, we've got a hard freeze warning farther to the south. That includes the Tucson area and southern portions of Pinal County. Also, a hard freeze warning over in La Paz County. That includes the courtside area for tomorrow morning and for Sunday morning. So outside the valley, rural areas of central and southern Arizona under those freeze warnings. Now tomorrow morning around town, here's what we're looking at. Could see a couple of locations, including Maricopa and Queen Creek, right around the freezing mark, maybe even Mesa at the freezing mark as well. But most other locales will be in the mid to upper 30s tomorrow morning. But it is going to get colder. We're going to trend downhill for the next several days. We'll tell you how cold in just a couple of minutes. Well, thank you with the extreme overnight cold temps this week. Download our AZ Family First Alert weather app for the very latest updates in your neighborhood. You can download it by scanning the QR code on your screen. Developing tonight back-to-back -to -back days of guns and safety concerns at schools in Arizona. A student was caught on campus with a gun at Verado High School in Buckeye yesterday, and today at the same school, police stepped in. They stepped up security on campus after reports of threats against students there. While detectives were not able to identify a credible specific threat, they did beef up their pre presence and are still investigating both incidents. Meanwhile, south of the valley, ar uh, police arrested another teen with a gun, this time at Casa Grande Union High School. Detectives there say 18-year-old Kyron Antone is a senior. Someone tipped off officials he had a gun in his backpack and administrators pulled him out of class, got the a Glock with an extended magazine and ammunition, but say there was no evidence he made any threats. He is now booked for weapons misconduct. A family south of the valley heartbroken tonight as police search for the gunman who killed a 14-year-old girl. This happened in a drive-by shooting yesterday in Coolidge. Police say she was sleeping in the living room when she was shot in the head. Police say someone fired more than 24 shots at the home, killing 14-year-old Micah Crawford. Micah, her 12-year-old sister, her mom, and a family friend were all inside the home at the time. Investigators still don't know why someone would target this home in the first place. So that takes a different mindset of a different person, a different monster, to shoot inside of a house blindly. That's not target practice. This is you not caring who's inside, who's behind those walls, those windows. You don't care. That's a monster. That's not a functioning human being. Authorities think they have found the car used in the drive-by. A stolen blue Kia sedan was abandoned a few hours after the shooting. If you know anything about this shooting, call Coolidge Police. In a massive shift in policy, executions in Arizona are now on hold. Governor Katie Hobbs issued an executive order to review the chemicals used, as well as different execution protocols. Attorney General Chris Mays filed a motion to suspend the execution of the next death row inmate. The state says this should improve accountability and transparency. Still, people differ on this issue. Brianna Whitney is in the newsroom to explain this. Brianna. Uh, Jamie, it, there is a small group of people who have had to go through the process of waiting for and watching an execution take place of a person who murdered their loved one. In these two true crime cases, one family lost their dad, the other lost their teenage daughter to brutal killings. So whether or not executions ever move forward in Arizona means more to them. While executing death row inmates in Arizona is broiled in politics and controversy, it's personal to Carol and Roger Fornoff. I know how long we waited. We waited for so long to that happened to our murderer of our child, our beautiful Christmas. 
1984, their 13 year old daughter, Christy Ann Fornoff, was on her newspaper route collecting money at a Tempe apartment complex when the complex custodian, Don Beatty, pulled her into his apartment, then raped and suffocated her to death. Don Beatty was put to death in 2011, 27 years after the Fornoff's daughter was taken from them. When it finally happened, we were like shocked. Oh my gosh, it's actually going to happen. And, and yes, it did help us. It, it helped the family heal. That's why Friday's announcement by Governor Hobbs and Attorney General Chris Mays is difficult for the Fornoffs. Hobbs announcing a commissioner will now review how the death penalty is carried out, including how the state gets and uses drugs and chemicals for lethal injection and gas chamber executions and the processes in place for conducting them. After complications with a 2014 execution, they were put on hold and didn't resume in the state until last year when three inmates were put to death. We just want to make sure the practices are um, sound and that we don't end up with uh, botched executions like we've seen re recently. This past November, Murray Hooper was executed in Arizona for the 1980 murders of Patrick Redman and his mother-in-law. Hooper and two other men also attempted to kill Patrick's wife. On the day of execution, Patrick's kids wrote a letter saying, quote, we opposed any clemency for Murray Hooper. Hooper is a paid hitman for the Chicago mob. They shot everyone in the head, shooting our dad twice and then cutting his throat from ear to ear. Murray Hooper did that. It's just a shame that Hooper can't experience a death like that. He will get a nice, easy one. Both Governor Hobbs and Attorney General Mays say the review is necessary for ensuring executions are humane. The Fornoffs say what was done to their sweet and innocent daughter was the furthest thing from humane. It is not cruel and inhuman to be put to death for something that you purposely did. That is the law of the land. The governor says the commissioner of the review will eventually provide a final report that includes recommendations on improving the transparency, accountability, and safety of the execution process. Currently, there are 110 inmates on death row in Arizona. Live in the newsroom tonight, Brianna Whitney for Arizona's family. Brianna, thanks. Our investigative team discovered Governor Katie Hobbs appears to be ready to expand a controversial immigration policy which Governor Ducey was widely criticized for. According to a contract with the company that buses migrants from Arizona, Governor Hobbs wants to start flying them to their destinations. Today, Hobbs defended her plan, saying its goal is different. Ducey's contract used buses and planes to transport up to 150 migrants at a time to Washington, D.C. Hobbs says she wants to send migrants to where they want to go. I think we need to look at that practice and make sure that it's effective. Um, it's, it's something that provides support to those local communities. If we're spending the money to bus people, why not just get them to their final destination? Again, the paperwork's already in the works. The new contract did not contain any specific pricing, but last year the state legislature approved more than half a billion dollars in spending for border security, and the migrant transportation would likely come from that fund. Well, the city of Phoenix has had uh, significant issues with roadway fatalities uh, over the past several years, including that we're probably one of the worst large cities in the country when it comes to road fatalities. The director of street transportation for Phoenix trying to cut down on the high number of bad crashes on our streets. The city is looking into solutions and hoping an experiment underway with the University of Arizona will deliver some results. Uh, so now 12 different intersections are being adjusted. The yellow lights will stay yellow for an extra half second or so before turning red. Michael Raimondi is live in Phoenix with how a half second could help, Michael. Yeah, so the city is not releasing where those intersections are. They want people to just continue driving as they would without really knowing that something is changing at that intersection. And yeah, we're talking about about just about a half second here, so it may not seem like a big change. But the goal of this study is to see if it can really make a big difference. As we know, during rush hour on the streets of Phoenix, those roads can be packed with people, walkers, bikers, right? There were at least 113 fatal crashes in Phoenix because people did not stop for a red light from 2014 to 2020. The city says that is just too high of a number, and the director for street transportation says they want to study if adding around that half second of time will give people that extra beat to think about stopping or continuing through safely.
But I think having the opportunity to be able to see how people react here, to see whether it has a safety benefit or not, is important before we make a, an investment or a change to 1,200 traffic signals around our city. Now, he says the preliminary results so far show this is reducing the amount of people who are running red lights. And the hope is that continues and will prevent so many bad crashes from happening. Now, the study is using cameras and sensors at those 12 intersections to monitor things. They still have a few weeks left of actually studying. They're going to take the results, go through the data, analyze it, and then be, and then they will give recommendations to the council sometime this spring. Now, Jared and Jamie, I yes. want to ask you both, if you're thinking about when you're in the car, heading to work, heading home, what do you think is about the average time that a light is yellow when you're driving through the streets? Oh, gosh, I'd say like... Four seconds. Five to six. Four. Four? Uh, you're pretty close there, Jared. Yeah, so the, the lowest or the shortest amount of time a light can be yellow here in Phoenix, 4.3 seconds. Mm. I'm wondering if you uh, did some research ahead of time. There, Jared. <laughs> I've mm. just been driving on these streets for a long time, Michael. <laughs> it is interesting that they're not going to tell people which streets <laughs> right. they're going to elongate these yellow lights. I mean, I guess that's part of the whole experiment yeah, to see I if it works. you figure it out, since you're All clearly right. timing our yellow you, lights around you, you know I'm going to be watching. <laughs> well, hopefully it delivers results. Michael, yeah. interesting stuff. Thanks. <laughs> Thank you, Michael. Still to come here at 9, hundreds of families up north of the valley cut off from their water supply. Tonight, the latest proposal to restore it. Some internet providers are not delivering the speeds we are paying for. What Consumer Reports found on a deep dive into thousands of internet bills. And plus, this bobcat needs some help. Can you see the problem there? We'll take you to the local community coming together to try to set the animal free next. The Extra Point, weeknights at 1035 on Arizona's Family 3TV. Honda Inventory is here. Save thousands with 1.9% financing or get new Accords just $289 a month. Arizona Ready Hondas, 1.9% or Accords $289. Search your local Honda dealer today. It's good to have options. To never feel stuck with more or less than you actually want. To make a change when you feel like it. That's why at Cox, we're making a change too. Cox now offers flexible internet plans, so you can choose to just go with internet, add TV tomorrow, or home automation down the line. It's easier than ever to get just what you want and nothing you don't. Get a flexible internet plan for the everyday low price of $49.99. Sorry. You don't have to be. Healing takes time. <laughs> but we'll get there. Fantastic ride. The turbocharged, tech-inspired Kia Forte. Best two out of three. Lease a new 2023 Forte LXS for $219 a month. After 20 years, the re-merchandising and disposal of the dump. Luxury brands just arrived 50% below retail. Now liquidated 50 below our costs. To change out everything, first we gotta dump everything. Just dump for $6,000 on us. Disposed under two. Design and recline, $9.95. Complete bedrooms and dining. Famous names dumped for $3,500. Liquidated, $7.95. $8,000 mansion size Persian rugs, $888. Complete liquidation of the dump factory outlet. Gettle, G O E T T L. When your plumbing needs attention, when your plumbing needs attention, call Gettle. Call Gettle. We'll open that clog drain. We'll open that clog drain. For just $80. For just $80. Gettle, we do things the right way, not the easy way. Drive a Honda today and do not pay for 90 days. New Hondas with no payments till May. New Hondas are in stock and Arizona ready with no payments till May. Search your local Honda dealer today. Whether you're headed up north or enjoying the valley sun. Staying aware and being prepared to keep your family safe. Hear about it first from your first alert weather and traffic team on Arizona's Family 3TV. 
A mama bobcat in need of help in Buckeye. Now the community is trying to lure in the big cat so she can get the attention she needs. They've even set up a GoFundMe account trying to raise some money for their efforts. Sarah Robinson is live in Buckeye tonight. Sarah, they are still searching for her. Yes, guys, they are. And she is known here as Mama Bobcat. She has two kittens. And recently, neighbors here noticed something around her neck, and they think it's causing her harm. This Mama Bobcat, Bobcat, when we first noticed her, she had two kittens with her at the time. That's why she became Mama Bobcat. For many months, Mama has been a favorite at the Sun City Festival neighborhood in Buckeye. But recently, people noticed something unusual. We couldn't identify what was around her neck. Uh, so people started watching for her and getting better pictures. And so we have several pictures and decided that it wasn't a trap, uh, tracking collar. It wasn't coming off. It was compressing. And the last photo, one of the last photos we got looked like blood around, um, the hose on her neck. So we decided it was time to take action. Tammy Bithell says one reason she moved here is to see more wildlife and many of her neighbors did as well. We have all kinds of wild animals, and we want to keep them. So they made this GoFundMe, the donations going towards professional trappers to help Mama, because game and fish don't typically handle these types of cases. It is likely that she will continue to grow, um, and so obviously getting this off of her neck um, would definitely be preferable. Almost everything. Um, I mean, if it's hindering her way of life, um, not being able to eat or breathe the way that she should, and... Uh, just get her back to the way she should be. Casey Bartolos, a trapper with Fox Wildlife, says trapping bobcats can take weeks, but in just a few nights, they got one, only it wasn't mama. They can be really difficult. Um, in a perfect world, we'd like to be able to come out and set traps and get them the very first night. Uh, this particular guy that we had, it took about three days, so it was pretty good, but we've had it go anywhere from a night to maybe two, three weeks. They use a mix of items to lure the big cats, like oysters, rodents, furs, and bobcat urine and droppings. This guy sent right back into the wild, but the search for mama continues. It's incredible. People here love the wildlife. We're out here for the wildlife. <laughs> And as for how she got that hose stuck around her neck, well, Arizona Fish and Game tell me that bobcats frequent suburban areas often, and so they believe that she probably got into an unfinished house, and that's how the hose got there. Guys? Oh, my goodness. Interesting that they thought it was maybe a tracking collar at first. Yeah. That's what I would have assumed, because yeah. it's such a strange thing to see, but clearly it's, it's causing much me too, more of a problem. Me too, but it, yeah. you can kind of... Yeah, you can kind of see like the multiple layers mm -hmm. to it and yeah. people got a little bit closer, realized something was seriously wrong. They also thought that they saw blood. Oh. Yeah. So that's why they decided to reach out for help. So Sarah, what happens when they actually do trap mama? Yeah, so once they finally get here, her, they'll take her to an animal hospital. They'll sedate her, make her nice and comfortable. They'll remove that hose, then check for any infections or injuries. When she's all clear, they'll release her right back to the wild, and hopefully she'll find her kittens again. I'll send you back to you guys. Yeah, back right, to the babies. Thank Thanks, Sarah. Yeah, back to the babies. Good. All right, well, it's going to be cold out there for yeah. us, for the wildlife, for everybody this weekend. For the well, babies. Yeah. yeah, and uh, northern Arizona, too, we've sort of been glossing over that. They're going to get really cold. Mm -hmm. Once the wind starts dying down and the clouds clear up there, but we're going to be pretty cold for Metro Phoenix standards with uh, overnight lows in the 30s for the next five days at least, maybe even a little bit longer than that. Tomorrow night, we're looking for overnight, I should say, temperatures dropping into the upper 30s. And then tomorrow afternoon, we'll be right around 60 degrees for afternoon high temperatures. And uh, we're looking at the tail end of the storm system just exiting our state. We had up six, seven inches of snow up in northern Arizona earlier today. Uh, current temperatures, it's already down to two degrees at the south rim of the Grand Canyon, 26 at Winslow. 27 for Sholo and Payson, 49 degrees at Lake Havasu City. Not much wind out there right now, and that's why temperatures are going to drop off. But still, we have these pockets where the wind is still pretty brisk, including up Sedona Way, and that will tend tonight to keep temperatures up just a little bit, all that air uh, moving around. Now, as far as alerts are concerned, these are the alerts, the freeze warnings that are out, both a regular freeze warning for the area just southeast of the valley and hard freeze warnings down around Tucson and also in La Paz County. 
County. Those run for tomorrow morning and for uh, Sunday morning. And as far as lows are concerned, we could see uh, temperatures that are going to be. We've already got the single digits at the canyon. Could see single digits at Flagstaff. 29 for Safford. Uh, also 29 degrees at Globe Miami. So as that storm system exit will continue to be hooked up to that cold air today was cold enough. 58 was the high 68 is uh, average for today's date. So we were 10 degrees below average. We are first alerting for next Tuesday. There's a possibility that cold weather that freeze warning could make its way into Metro Phoenix. In the meantime, we've got some cold days ahead. Lots of events that are outside, including first day of Barrett Jackson tomorrow. Well, most of it's inside, but you got to walk around outside to get anywhere. Uh, temperatures tomorrow will be in the 40s as they open up mid to upper 50s as they shut things down tomorrow afternoon and tomorrow evening. And we stay cold through Wednesday of next week. Man, that is cold. Mm -hmm. We're ready for it, Royal. Thanks. Yep. Ahead here at nine, are you getting what you pay for with your internet service? A review of thousands of bills finds people are paying extra fees for subpar speeds. Mm -hmm. And on this week's Does It Work? We take a look at an automatic tennis ball thrower oh. for your pet. Yeah, Jared perks up. Yeah. Does it work? And is it worth it? Next. Do you know Tucker? Tucker Hill AC Plumbing and Electric. Time for Tucker.com. With the Fry's VIP card, it's easy to get lower than low prices. For the win, earn fuel points on every purchase and save up to a dollar a gallon at the pump. With Fry's fuel points, all you do is win big, big savings. Fry's, fresh for everyone. Research, immunotherapy, three-dimensional radiation, tomorrow's technology today. All of this and much more is used to treat your cancer at Ironwood Cancer and Research Centers. With complex treatments, our goal is simple, to give you more, more time, more life. Through the latest research, clinical trials, and groundbreaking oncology medications, always looking to find you more. Ironwood Cancer and Research Centers, outsmarting cancer, one patient at a time. Let's go! It's your journey. Own every mile in an available H-Track all-wheel drive Hyundai SUV. Get 2.9% APR for 60 months or up to 750 bonus cash on the Tucson. See your Valley Hyundai dealer. At Wells Fargo, direct deposits come up to two days early with early payday. What if everything came two days early? Have a good weekend, Mary. All right now. Have a good weekend. But it's Wednesday. See you Monday. Am I missing something? It's the weekend, baby. See you later. Like getting things two days early? When it comes to payday, you can with Wells Fargo. What are you doing this weekend? To everyone who loves great food, let us make you a meal the Wisconsin way. We cook each butter burger to order for you and the people you love, so it's the best part of your day. The best. The best. And every creamy scoop of fresh frozen custard, pure happiness. Pure happiness. Pure happiness. Because where Culver's comes from, and the heart of America's Dairyland. Our love. Our love for fresh food is as strong as our love for all of you. <laughs> from Wisconsin with love. Welcome to Delicious. Talking Stick Resort Super Zona Weekend, featuring Steve Aoki. Shaq's Fun House with Snoop Dogg, Diplo, and DJ Diesel. Gronk Beach with 21 Savage, Diplo, and Little John. Sports Illustrated, The Party with Machine Gun Kelly and the Chainsmokers. And don't miss our Super Sunday Watch Party with Bo Jackson and Doug Flutie. Super Zona at Talking Stick Resort. How are you getting ready for the game? With the Fry's app, no matter where you order free pickup, you get the same great deals as you get in our stores. So today, Fry's, fresh for everyone. Well, it looks like it may be worth taking a second look, a closer look perhaps at your internet bill. I think I shall tonight. <laughs> Consumer Reports collected tens of thousands of bills and what they found might surprise you. Here's On Your Side's Gary Harper. How much are you paying for your internet? If you grabbed your bill but are confused and still can't find the answer, you're not alone. And knowing how much you pay for it is important so you can budget on a month-to-month -month basis 
of having this essential service. Consumer Reports spent more than eight months analyzing more than 22,000 internet bills submitted by people from across the country. Amidst lines of charges and fees, determining the true price of internet proved to be challenging. A lot of consumers bundle it with their TV or their phone service. And some providers have a separate line item for internet service, but others do not. They just have one price for bundled service, and you can't really tell on that sort of bill what part of that bundle is paying for your broadband service. The NCTA Internet and Television Association, a trade group, disagrees and says cable providers continue to provide consumers with transparent billing information on their websites and promotional materials. Consumer Reports also found prices for Internet service varied widely. We found people paying for subpar broadband service, like 5 to 10 megabits per second download speeds, were paying on average the same as people getting 100, 300 megabits per second. How can you make sure you're getting the best possible deal? Well, first, make sure you're getting the speed that you're paying for. You can use Internet Speed Test at Speed Test by Ookla or M-Labs. Next, call your provider to find out what you're actually paying for each month, then start to negotiate with your provider. Consumer Reports members consistently find lower prices by haggling. And buy a top-rated router to avoid recurring monthly rental fees. I'm Gary Harper, on your side. Tensions rising over how to get water to hundreds of people in the North Valley, but a potential solution is on the horizon. Suns fans had their eyes on more than Cam Johnson returning to the court last night. Who else was spotted at the game and what it means about the team getting closer to having a new buyer? Whether you're headed up north or enjoying the Valley Sun. Staying aware and being prepared will keep your family safe. That's why we're committed to being your first alert weather and traffic team. Be the first to know when your pets, plants, pipes, and precious ones need extra attention. Ice, snow, shut down roads. First alert gets you to where you need to go. Quickly and safe. If conditions can change your day, you'll hear about it first from your first alert weather and traffic team on Arizona's Family 3 TV. Toyota trains certified technicians. Is that important? Well, you wouldn't hire just anyone to help you move, would you? The shortcut saves two hours. Easy, please, dude. <laughs> no. <laughs> of course not. Mm. Not again. Toyota Service Centers. Keep your Toyota a Toyota. Healing takes time, <laughs> but we'll get there. Meet Leon the third, the second, and the first of them all. Three generations who all bank differently with Chase. Really? Luckily, Chase has solutions that grow with you. One bank for now, for later, for life. Chase, make more of what's yours. For adventure. For climbing. For splashing, for towing, for premium, for capable. The GMC AT4 lineup, premium and capable. That's professional grade from GMC. Step up to GMC with 2.9% APR and no monthly payments for 90 days on Sierra light duty models. We are professional grade GMC. Hi, I'm Byron Brown, personal injury attorney. How do you know if I'm the right guy to settle your claim? Because I got this scale thing. Nope, because I have all these law books. Nah, -uh. because I'm wearing this fancy blue suit. Bull I'm straight to the point. I'll answer your call. No BS. I'm the anti-lawyer lawyer. $5 million of brand new luxury bags. Disposed for less than $1 million. $1,000 bedding sets free. 3,000 queens, your choice, $5.95. 4,000 king size, $7.95. $6,000 handmade heirloom or Serta's Best Eye Comfort. Any size, $12.95. Every highest rated Tempur-Pedic and Smart Bed. Free delivery, installation, and removal. Free power adjustables. Free upgrades to king size and free interest. Remerchandising. But first, liquidating $5 million of luxury bags. Extra 80% off the prices. And the fact that he's doing these political stunts and he's doing gamesmanship with people's lives. There is water. We just have to be able to augment it and be able to sit down and have adult conversations.
Well, 500 families up north of the valley are desperate to keep their taps from running dry. The city of Scottsdale cut them off at the beginning of this month. So tonight there is a new short-term proposal to get the water flowing again. Derek Stahl is here with us, and Derek, this is not a done deal yet. Not a done deal. This has been quite a saga. Mm -hmm. Republican State Representative David Cook introduced a short-term plan to Scottsdale officials that would bring water to Rio Verde foothills without using a drop of Scottsdale's water supply. Cook's new proposal includes using water from the Gila River Indian community and then paying Scottsdale to run the water through their infrastructure to the people who need it in Rio Verde foothills. For years, the city of Scottsdale warned those folks that they would have to cut off the water, a decision that was ultimately triggered by their drought management plan. Rio Verde, not part of the city's territory. Well, before the 2023 deadline passed, some people in the unincorporated community proposed a domestic water improvement project to try to solve the problem on their own, but that was struck down by the Board of Supervisors. So now, Representative Cook believes his short-term plan will work, and he says it's not kicking the can down the road for a permanent solution. We need to get these written agreements in place, then that way we can move forward to the long-term solution was getting someone to service that area and as Scottsdale said they wanted, get out of the water business. We need to get a utility company that is in that area to where it's all of a sudden their responsibility for supplying that water to those people. There's a docket that's open. They're having a hearing as we stand here at the Corporation Commission to move that plan forward. So it's not a done deal, guys, because before this plan can move forward, they do need four votes from the Scottsdale City Council to do this. We did reach out to the City Council for comment. We haven't heard back yet. All right. Been going on for a couple of years now, oh, Derek. Yeah. Thank you. This weekend will mark 50 years since the Supreme Court confirmed the constitutional right to abortion. But justices, of course, reversed it just about seven months ago, sending that decision on abortion rights back to the states. Well, today's annual March for Life in Washington reflected the change as people opposed to abortion rights switched their focus from the court to Capitol Hill. Their goal is to pressure lawmakers to do more on the federal level to restrict abortions. We will march until abortion is unthinkable. I'm support women's rights and the women's right to choose to get an abortion. President Biden signed a proclamation today marking the 50th anniversary of Roe versus Wade. Here in Arizona, now abortions are illegal after 15 weeks of pregnancy. Governor Katie Hobbs appointed several top level state jobs this week, including a new DPS director and a new head of the state prison system who is moving here from Maine. He is known for his reform policies and the union representing the prison staff says he is not a good fit. He's okay for where he was at. He was at a very small place. I'm from Brooklyn. I know Maine well. Very small, a lot of snowbirds there. Crimes very low, opiates. What do we have here? We have nothing but, we have cartels, we have gangs. We have eight gangs and five that we're trying to certify. It's a free for all. He's going from a place where there was bunny rabbits to a place where there's lions. It is not transferable. Well, this full interview airs on Politics Unplugged this weekend. We'll also look at the race for the Senate in 2024 and which names may be on the ballot. Politics Unplugged on Sunday on 3TV and on CBS 5. A Navy SEAL who's been AWOL since 2019 was killed in Ukraine this week. A Navy official confirms Daniel Swift was killed in fighting on Wednesday, but couldn't say when he actually arrived in Ukraine. Meanwhile, a high-stakes meeting among Western allies today in Germany focused on defending Ukraine from the Russian invasion. Ukrainian officials were hoping to convince Germany to lend their troops tanks, but Germany did not commit today. Ukraine's president says tanks are key to helping defend against an expansion new Russian offensive. Time remains a Russian weapon. We have to speed up. Time must become our common weapon. Just like air defense and artillery, armored vehicles and tanks. While Britain sent some of their tanks to Ukraine, the United States and Germany have not so far, though of course the Pentagon continues to send Ukraine billions of dollars in aid. Uh, this traumatizing scene caught on camera in Georgia. A substitute school bus driver has been suspended after refusing to let some young children off the school bus. Zach Summers has the story behind this chaotic incident. Samantha Lee says her eight-year-old daughter was terrified Wednesday afternoon when she couldn't get off at her normal bus stop near the intersection of Old Harris Road and Jimmy Lee Smith Parkway in Dallas. 
because she thought that the bus driver was kidnapping her. On board the bus, Paulding County School students, including kids from All Good Elementary School. The driver, a substitute, refusing to let students without yellow tags exit the bus. Okay. Uh, kids that don't have any documents on their bus. Okay, bye, bye, bye. The parents were asking over and over again, please open the door. Please let us see our children. Lee says her daughter had a yellow tag. The back and forth between parents and the driver escalating to this. Come on. A parent appearing to assault the driver. Are you not? No! Moments later, parents seen pulling their kids from the windows of the bus and out the back emergency door. I think we were really concerned for the safety of our children at that point. The Paulding County School District saying in a statement that its deboarding process broke down as the substitute driver was trying to manage the release of younger students. I feel like that she was doing her job. Dana Toole managing to get her two children off the bus before the chaos, telling us unlike other parents, she supports the driver's actions. I mean, I would rather my kid be safe than just dropped off because you never know kid, what can happen to your kids. There are some new signs. The struggling Phoenix Suns are close to having a new owner. Just last night, a special sighting at the Footprint Center. Here's Mark McClune. Well, for a few weeks now, we've been hearing that Matt Ishbia's purchase of the Phoenix Suns is getting close, and it certainly looks like it's getting close to finished at Thursday night's win over the Nets. Our camera's capturing Ishbia sitting courtside with acting Governor Sam Garvin. It's his first public appearance since it was announced that Ishbia would reportedly purchase the Suns for $4 billion. Now, it's not final, but Ishbia was actually at the Suns facility on Friday morning and spoke with the team. I think it's great for the team, the organization, and the community to, to have someone like Matt in place, to have him courtside probably allows for everybody to, you know, finally put a face to ev everything that's been talk talked about and, and what hasn't happened officially, but it, it kind of lets everybody know, like, okay, this is, this is our guy. I got a chance to meet him today for the first time briefly. And um, it, it was short, but everything that I've heard about Matt and his family and, and the way he runs his business, it's been um, pretty cool to hear all that. So getting a chance to talk to him today was, was something I'd been looking forward to. Yeah, breath of fresh air for the Suns. The other big storyline in the win, the return of Cam Johnson playing his first game since tearing his meniscus, meniscus on November 4th. He scored 19 points in 22 minutes. He was only supposed to play 16 minutes, but went over that and made two huge defensive plays down the stretch. Next up for the Suns, the Indiana Pacers on Saturday, and we are looking forward to hearing from the Suns' new owner at some point. I'm Mark McClune for Arizona's Family. Oh, and Mark's going big time. He is. So here on Arizona's Family, you might see a familiar face appear <laughs> on the Kelly Clarkson show this week. Yeah, Mark's on the show on Monday. One of a couple sports reporters chosen to come in and ask the cast of an upcoming movie called 80 for Brady questions during kind of a mock press conference. So here is part of it now. All right, where is Mark? Uh, Mark, are you? Yeah. Oh, right here, okay, Mark you. McClune, Arizona's family. Hey, uh, so much was discussed today. I'm wondering the, the proudest moment in the discussion, and this question is for the whole panel, what you would have said and done maybe differently, and we'll start with you, Lily. Lily. <laughs> As in Lily Tomlin. Yes, Lily Tomlin. All uh, kinds of huge Jane star Bonda. power on that stage. Yeah. Uh, well, you can catch all of it. We can't show the whole thing. Mark's on camera. Mm -hmm. Five at 10 o'clock in the morning, 2 p.m. here on 3 TV. Can't wait. Yeah, I can't wait. Very and, and congratulations, Mark. He's our biggest hype guy around here. I want the behind the scenes story of what that was like. Yes. All right, ahead here at nine, choosing the right diet isn't always easy. If you're considering intermittent fasting, you want to hear about a new study that's been years in the making. And we look at if an automatic tennis ball thrower would be a good gift for you and your dog. That's this week's Does It Work? Mark needs to do a podcast on his behind the scenes stuff because I talked to him about it today and it's really cool. I bet, yeah. I bet, I bet. You got the scoop. Freeze warning, it's coming up. <laughs> 
While you were starting your morning, we were alerting you to travel challenges. The FAA has ordered all domestic departures to stop. Good Morning Arizona was on your side with the solutions you needed live on air, digital platforms, and social media. Lots of questions. We're covering it all live on Good Morning Arizona. We're starting to see it now on the board as more and more flights start to get canceled. Check in with your airline before you actually head to the airport. Count on Good Morning Arizona. We Road to Adventure starts at La Mesa. Our huge selection of RVs and adventure vans make it possible. A used Airstream International Serenity is discounted $15,000. Start your road to adventure at La Mesa. Cancer. It's a word no one wants to hear. But at Cancer Treatment Centers of America, we hear it every day. It's a word we've dedicated our lives to overcoming by changing the way patients are treated. And now we're part of City of Hope, which is one of the nation's top 10 cancer hospitals. Together, we'll combine leading-edge clinical research with precision cancer treatment so we can be there when you need us most. So when you hear the word cancer, there's another word that should come to mind. Hope. Call now. At Wells Fargo, direct deposits come up to two days early with early payday. What if everything came two days early? Have a good weekend, Mary. All right now. Have a good weekend. But it's Wednesday. See you Monday. I'm not missing something. It's the weekend, baby. See you later. Like getting things two days early? When it comes to payday, you can with Wells Fargo. What are you doing this weekend? CAZ Sports Bar is the Valley's home for sports fans. Now, it's also your new home for sports betting. So you can make your picks. Catch all the action. And enjoy everything else you crave. We're your home for sports betting, Arizona. CAZ Sports Bar at Casino Arizona. I love Camelback Toyota. <laughs> You've treated me just super over a number of years. Each time we come, it's like we're seeing our friends. All everything, even the financial piece, was done by phone and by internet. The service department is, is wonderful. You're in and out, and they give you great popcorn. I like the popcorn. <laughs> I would recommend anybody come to Camelback Toyota. Stop by today or visit us online at camelbacktoyota.com. Your road to adventure starts at La Mesa. Our huge selection of RVs and adventure vans makes it possible. A new Tiffin Cahaba is discounted over $77,000. Start your road to adventure at La Mesa. Do you know Tucker? Tucker Hill AC Plumbing and Electric. Time for Tucker.com. Okay, pet lovers, so you might have seen those automatic machines that throw tennis balls for dogs, yep. so you could just relax <laughs> while your dog gets some exercise. That is the focus of tonight's Does It Work? An inventor created something called the iFetch, which sends tennis balls, they say, flying up to 30 feet. Rachel Hackbarth put it to the test. Daniel Gonzalez is getting pretty good at making the perfect pitch. On any given day, he's taking care of up to 100 dogs at his play care and boarding business. As you can imagine, he's playing a lot of fetch. Daniel is hoping this week's Does It Work product, the $129.99 iFetch Interactive Ball Launcher, will give his arm a much-needed rest. I have not seen the specific one, but I have, I have seen videos and stuff of, of similar items. We're testing out the company's version made for smaller dogs, which which means we get three mini tennis balls that our helper, Winnie the Pooh, gets to play with. What you think, buddy? <laughs> he, he likes it. The machine uses batteries or this plug-in attachment. We have three distance settings to choose from. 10 feet, 20 feet, 30 feet. Nice. The makers say that our tennis ball should take off flying with just the press of this button. Yeah, let's try this one see how far it goes. Winnie, 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 Winnie. Winnie the Pooh is now Winnie confused. He's like, where'd it go? Daniel says this unsuccessful round of fetch is just because of this puppy's young age, not the product itself. Obviously, we've got a little learning curve here because Winnie's a baby. Yeah. But say you had a bigger dog, do you think that this could be something that they could play with? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And honestly, you could teach them to drop it in there themselves and kind of take yourself out of the whole situation. <laughs> Here it goes. Challenge accepted, Daniel. Enter our two-year-old weather dog, May. 
This is how well she is using the iFetch after just a day of training, proving Daniel right that you can teach a slightly older dog new tricks using this tech toy. Or does it work? I'm Rachel Hackbarth. Wait, they have a weather dog? Cute little corgi, yeah. Why don't we have a weather dog? I don't know. I think they're in Ohio, right? Royal? Can you get us a weather dog? No. Aren't you the chief meteorologist? <laughs> do something for us. I like that. I think a lot of people's, like, I have one dog who would never tire of that. Yeah. He would, I would, it would have to run out of batteries or something for him to stop playing with it. Yeah. And you think you could train him to oh, drop yeah. the ball at yes. second? Yes. Yes. But yes. Myrtle He's, would say no. No, the other, Myrtle would run the other way. It makes too much noise. Yes, very she doesn't like surprises like that. Yeah. Very timid. I get it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we are shifting gears because today mm. marks three years since the first COVID case was officially confirmed right here in the U.S. Hard to believe three years. This was diagnosed in Washington State up north of Seattle, January 20th, 2020. The patient, a man in his 30s, had recently returned from China where the virus appeared in late 2019. The first COVID case was announced to the public the very next day, but later on evidence emerged showing the virus was here in the States weeks before that case. More than 668 million cases have been confirmed globally. The United States reported 102 million cases, more than any other country, though that could be due to the availability of testing here. We are still dealing with COVID mixed in with the flu in RSV cases, but the number of people getting respiratory viruses is trending down for the first time since September. The CDC says the number of ER visits for those three viruses combined has dropped to the lowest level in three months for all age groups. Well, diets are hard. <laughs> Choosing the right one, even harder. <laughs> a new study is shedding some light on a popular trend called intermittent fasting. Now, I know people who swear by this. Yeah. Have you ever tried this? Mm -hmm. yes, I know they a have. lot of, of people who have. So if you haven't yeah. heard of it, you don't eat for 16 hours, 16 hours straight, yeah, right? You try to sleep yeah. for half of it, eight hours. <laughs> and then you got four hours on yeah. either side to starve. So you eat all meals in that eight-hour span. Well, this new study tracked portion sizes and eating times of 500 people and then collected data on their health health, weight, for six years, researchers found in the end no association between intermittent fasting and weight loss. No one likes to be told, you cannot eat, you cannot do this. So just being able to set boundaries on when you can and cannot do things can really help you attain those goals. Well, yeah, as she said, the big secret to the best diet is just, it depends. Different things work for different people, right? Mm -hmm. Jamie's shaking her head. If you need a good <laughs> starting point, the U.S. Dietary <laughs> Guidelines recommend focusing 85% yes. of your food on nourishment, mm -hmm. the other 15% on some enjoyment and indulgence. Ooh. Salad. 85 to Yuck. 15. <laughs> okay. Okay, mostly salad and a little cake on the side. <laughs> Sounds good. Uh, here's a reminder if you have an Apple Watch uh, to charge it because it just could end up saving your life. Yeah, a pregnant woman says her watch kept saying her heart rate was too high. It kept warning her. She didn't think it was a big deal until it just wouldn't stop. One off uh, the first time and I thought it was strange. Then the second time, maybe 10 minutes later or so. And then the third time, I think maybe it was like a half an hour or so later. And when it went off the third time, I thought, okay, th something's going on. So with all those warnings, Jesse Kelly got up, went to the hospital. When she got there, she found out the reason her heart rate was so high. She was in full-blown labor. Her blood pressure was dropping. She was losing blood due to a pregnancy complication. Yet three hours later, a healthy baby, Shelby Marie, was born. Her doctor says the Apple Watch notifications most likely saved both her and her baby's life. All right, let's uh, get a check of the forecast with Royal. I picked uh, both broccoli and tomatoes out of my garden this morning, so oh, my question fresh. is, do I have to cover it in the nights ahead? Uh, yeah. I can't lose these plants. What about well, those uh, ornamental, the tender ornamentals? Well, and they are tender. Mm. Uh, but yeah, I would say not this weekend, Jared, knowing where you live, but early next week, you're gonna have to cover them up. Yeah, I'm gonna have to cover them up, and I usually don't get that cold. That's how chilly it's gonna be around here as we head into early next week. 49 degrees right now at Sky Harbor Airport, and yeah, we do have a freeze warning out for tomorrow morning and Sunday morning, and this is areas south of the 202 out in the Southeast Valley. We anticipate we'll be down around freezing or maybe a degree below in some of those locations over the next couple of mornings, but most of Metro Phoenix is not included in that. We'll be in the mid to upper 30s.
around the rest of town. But as we move farther to the south and off to the west, hard freeze warnings. Hard freeze warning for La Paz County next couple of mornings. Hard freeze warning southern portions of Pinal County includes Oracle all the way down to Tucson under that hard freeze warning for the weekend mornings as well. Uh, well, we've done a week of a week straight now of below average temperatures and bet money is on another week of below average temperatures as things continue on the cold side. In fact, here's our average high 68 degrees. We're not going to be anywhere near that until about a week from today and our average low 47 really nowhere near that. That's how uh, cold we're looking at temperatures uh, as a result of this uh, storm that came through yesterday. Now we're on the back side of it and we're seeing that colder air move on. In. So um, mostly cloudy for tonight. 38 is going to be the morning low. Uh, then mostly sunny tomorrow with a high of 60 uh, degrees. Our seven day first alert forecast with a first alert for Tuesday. Possibility of a freeze warning there. And temperatures are going to be much colder on Tuesday than they're going to be around uh, Metro Phoenix the next couple of days. That's why we're going to watch Tuesday very closely. And look at the temperatures. They stay low until late next week or we make it, make it back into the mid-60s. Warm up yes. in a week. <laughs> I'll be waiting. Royal, thank you. Go get us a weather dog. Heard from the bosses. They said it's okay. It's time for Pat's Run. We hope you join us in Tempe on Saturday, April 15th to honor Pat Tillman's legacy and support military families. You can find a link to sign up for that 4.2-mile walk or run on our website, azfamily.com. Well, you likely saw him on Malcolm in the Middle. Valley resident Frankie Muniz is turning his dream into a reality and getting ready to race in Florida next month. The actor turned racer is gearing up for the ARCA National Series Championship. Muniz spoke with us on Good Morning Arizona about turning this long lost dream into a reality. Took a longer than expected break, but I realized if I'm gonna reach this goal, I gotta do it now. And been very fortunate for all the pieces to come together to allow me to, to get in a great car. So I'm very excited. Yeah, so Frankie is going to be one of the older guys in the series debuting as a 37 year old driver. Arca is a feeder series into the cup series. So everyone who is in this series has a lot of experience and is really good. A little black woman walking and spraying stuff on the sidewalks and trees. I don't know what the hell she's doing. It scares me though. And that was a 911 call made about a little girl in New Jersey. And it turns out she was just walking in her neighborhood trying to catch bugs. Nine-year-old Bobby Wilson is fascinated with bugs. And last fall, she learned about an invasive species in school and wanted to help her neighbors. She made a homemade bug spray and got to work. And then someone called 911 on her, something her mom called racial profiling. Those exact words in another town, another state, I could be grieving. So now the good news, Yale noticed her love of entomology and an assistant professor decided to become her mentor. Little Bobby was invited to campus to meet scientists who looked like her and even got to see the first spotted lantern fly specimen added to the Yale Peabody Museum of Natural History collection. The insects she gathered herself now preserved in history. Well, have you ever wanted to stay the night in an apartment from, like, the Friends TV show? Well, now you can. We'll take you on a tour of some Airbnbs that are themed after some popular sitcoms, and they are very detailed. Arizona's Family News is brought to you by Sweet James Accident Attorneys. How are you supposed to know what injury lawyer to hire when they all say... these empty slogans. The injury lawyer you hire does make a difference. Visit us at husbandandwifelawteam.com. With LifeWell, help is here to support our community with counseling, housing services, and addiction treatment. We focus on adults and young adults with financial need. Learn more at lifewell.us and join our team to make a difference in the lives of others. We're hiring counselors, nursing staff, psychiatrists, and more. Start a career of hope, health, and healing at lifewell.us. This message is sponsored by LifeWell and a Virginia G. Piper Charitable Trust COVID response grant. What would I do? I would get rid of these bat wing arms. That's a good question. 
I would do a tummy tuck. If I were just a little bigger on top, it would really balance things out. I think the lines around my mouth are what ages me the most right now. What would you change about your body if you could? At Chow Bella, we create world-class results from the world's top cosmetic surgeons. I would do that. Definitely. Chow Bella, say hello to beautiful. Some people like to talk in the microphones. We prefer dropping them. The MDX Type S, a new era of premium performance. Some stores have some appliances, but Spencer's is appliances. That's all we do. We're passionate about giving you the very best Frigidaire products and always at a lower price. We know every time you walk through our doors, even though we've been in the Valley for over 50 years, we prove every day we have lower prices, a better selection, and better service than anyone else. Spencer's is an employee-owned company with over 25,000 five-star reviews. Spencer's is appliances. That's all we do. And it's like having a friend in the business. When you catch a big wild trophy fish, you mount it on a soft sesame bun, crispy fish, and this other stuff, two for seven bucks every day. Arby's, we have the meat. The Extra Point, weeknights at 1035 on Arizona's Family 3 TV. Many people think that all injury lawyers are the same, that their outcome is the same, the experience is the same. It's just not true. Hi, I'm Mark Breyer. And I'm Alexis Breyer. The injury lawyer you hire does matter. Call the husband and wife law team first. Arizona's Family News closed captioning is sponsored by the Arizona Window and Door Store. The friends and Seinfeld fans, listen up. You can now stay in the show's famous apartments. Well, sort of. Simone Jameson shows us how detailed an Ohio couple got when they created a sitcom-themed Airbnb for short-term renters. Really wanted it to feel like you were literally on a set. The, if you look at most of these sets, the walls don't go all the way up. It's, it's imaginary. It's not real. It's a unique experience Cincinnati-based property developers Otto and Brenda Baum want to make available to all short-term renters. This friends theme Airbnb and Seinfeld theme Airbnb in Cincinnati's Pleasant Ridge neighborhood are both exact replicas of the TV classics, chock full of memorabilia. The door in Seinfeld, the entryway in Seinfeld, I wanted that to be like perfect because you see Kramer come through that door so many times. And there's going to be some board games and there's an episode with The Shining and the freezer, so we have The Shining and the freezer. The bomb's concept for these one bedroom, one bathroom sitcom suites came in the height of the pandemic out of the couple's love for the shows and watching them for hours with their kids in quarantine. They put their plan into action in October. We thought, you know, it might be fun to, to actually like go see a set and then what would be even neat, like even cooler would be to actually sit, sit in a set, to be able to like live in the set. Finding all the furnishings, pictures and more to match came with its own unique challenges. More than three months of work that took them to seven different states, exploring thrift stores, antique shops, Facebook Marketplace, and Craigslist for finds. It's a tiny set, it's a tiny room. We're dealing, at the end of the day, you still have a finite amount of square footage, so that's probably been the biggest challenge. One they say the final product makes worthwhile, and one they want TV fans everywhere to share with their loved ones for years to come. I want them to come here and binge watch Friends and well, just have time with your friends. I want people to sort of have that nostalgic Oh, I remember when, or I remember that, or I was doing that at that time. So it's like a feeling, and it, I think it'll be unique uh, to every person, but in, in essence, just sort of taking you back to a time and place. We're booking a trip to Ohio. This is where I say good night, Arizona. Stay tuned. Jared and Yetta have the news at 10. Next. Nobody can tell you There's only one song worth singing Try and sell ya, cause he hands them up to see someone. Like Life gets bigger when you break from the herd. The Volkswagen take on. Visit your local Volkswagen dealer for 3.9% APR financing for 36 months on most new 2023 SUVs. 
I always loved my mom's lunch notes. Every day she'd pack some fruits and veggies and a little motivation to get me through. And now I'm working with Daily Harvest to pay it forward. You may not be a six foot nine professional basketball player with the deltoids of a marble statue, but you do have a convenient, wholesome meal with this sweet potato wild rice hash harvest bowl. And isn't that just as tasty? I'm so good at this. Daily Harvest delivers that good for you food you always want.